once you understand the idea of pH, then we take you into a little different direction, and that is the pKW, or the pOH. Now you remember that pH is equal to the negative log of the H3O plus ion concentration. So can we do the same thing with the hydroxide ion concentration? Could we calculate the pOH? And you bet, the answer to that is negative log of the OH minus ion concentration. Could we take the pAg? Well, an Ag is the silver ion concentration, right? So it's the negative log of the silver ion concentration. So the negative log, that's all the P represents. Originally we said that it's parts hydrogen. Well, it's also parts hydroxide, or it's parts silver ion. It's whatever that concentration, that's the, the word that's used there, the mathematics of it is the, literally the negative log of whatever the concentration that it actually is. Well, wait a minute, we have another number that we've been using here as well, and that's the KW. You remember the numerical value for KW was equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Well, does that mean that I can take the P, KW, and you can take the negative log of this? P, KW, then, could you predict it based on our mathematics we've shown you so far? Does it have a numerical value? Well, if you can't see that automatically, let's go ahead and do the math. P, KW is equal to the negative log of the KW. So we're going to use this 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Now, you plug that numerical value in your calculator, the pKW then ends up to be equal to 14. Now, that's another number you need to remember. And you need to remember it not only as its number, 14. That's, well, you know, okay, so the answer to the questions in the universe is 42. So what? Well, the answer to the universe here, the pKW is equal to 14. It's really, really useful for calculating pOH and pH. If I know the pH of a solution, I know it's pOH. If I know the pOH, I can calculate the pH. I'll show you how that's done. Okay, I'm going to write that up there in this fashion. The pKW is equal to 14, but it's equal to the negative log of the 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Well, let's look back and see how we got that 1 times 10 to the negative 14 in the first place. 1 times 10 to the negative 14 was the product of the hydroxide ion concentration times the product of the, or times the uh, concentration of the hydroxide ion. So we ended up with both of those, the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion concentrations. That fixes in water, if I have an increase in concentration of that, I have a decrease in concentration of that. Well, let's start from the neutral concentration and see how that actually works. If I take 1 times 10 to the negative 14 was equal to the product of 1 times 10 to the negative 7 and 1 times 10 to the negative 7 in a neutral solution, then if the same logic holds true here that we used up there. If I took the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14, I end up with 14. That's equal to, well, wait a minute, the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7 7, and the negative log of the uh, hydroxide ion concentration was the same, 1 times 10 to the negative 7. That is not rocket science. You can see that 14 is equal to 7 plus 7. Well, let's transfer that to something else that we use all the time in chemistry, and that is that the pKW is equal to the pH plus the pOH in this fashion. So now if I know what the pH is, I know what the pOH is. If I know what the pH is, I can calculate, if I have an unknown pH, then, uh, excuse me, if I have an unknown pOH, or an unknown hydroxide ion concentration, I can calculate that based on using this set of ideas and rules. I'll show you an example of that. If we have a solution that has a known pH, is equal to 3.6. Can I calculate the pOH or could I calculate the hydroxide ion concentration in that solution? Well, let's see. If the pH is equal to 3.6, I 
I could take the inverse log of that number and get the hydronium ion, or the, yeah, the hydronium ion concentration and then work it backwards to get the hydroxide ion concentration. Or I could say 14 minus 3.6 is equal to the pOH, like that. So let's do that in our calculator. I end up with 10.4 is equal to pOH. All right, now once we understand what the pOH is, we can reverse engineer it the same logic. We can say, well, the pOH, the p means the negative log of the OH minus ion concentration, so let's substitute that in there. And then let's undo the thing. Let's take the, multiply both sides by negative one, put the negative on the left side. Let's take the inverse log of both sides, get it that away. Now we can calculate it, just throwing it into our calculator. So if I have a 10.4 inverse log, I get a hydroxide ion concentration in this case of 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11. That's your hydroxide ion concentration. Now is that very high? No, that's very, very low. But then that makes sense because if the pH showed that it was acidic anyway, your hydroxide ion should be very, very low. Now, watch what we do with another aspect of this same problem. Let's reverse engineer this one. Let's take the um, same idea, if that pH is equal to the negative log of the H3O plus ion concentration, we're going to take the negative of that side, take the inverse log, both sides, to calculate the H3O plus ion concentration. So now we're going to take 0.6 sine. Okay, so now if we were able to calculate that, the H3O plus ion concentration is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4. The OH minus ion concentration is 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11. Let's see if all of this really comes up the way we predicted it to do. So let's take 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11, which is the OH minus ion concentration. Let's multiply it by the 2. Point, I'm the right numbers in the right place. 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 which is the H3O plus ion concentration. If everything works out right, those two numbers should come up with 1 times 10 to the negative 14, as we predicted from our previous problem. So we're going to take the numbers, multiply them together. And I come up with the number 9.79 times 10 to the negative 15. Well, what went wrong there? The answer to that is, Nothing went wrong. That number is very, very close. So within our significant figures, you start rounding things to two sig figs, 9.8 times 10 to the negative 15, and that means it's 0.2 from 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So that within our mathematical regions of, of accuracy, we have seen then that the pH plus the pOH equals 14, just like the product of their concentrations equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So it's just a way of using our pH and our pOH.